Welcome to livingpianos.com. I'm Robert Estrin. Today's subject is about the two kinds of encores. And there are fundamentally two different types of moods you want in encores. And I'm going to talk all about that. But first, I want to start with a personal reflection for you. You know, growing up with my father, Morton Estrin, who I've talked about so much in so many videos because he had such a profound effect upon me, not just musically, but who I am as a person as well. And I want to talk a little bit about his experiences as a performer. And believe it or not, as much as he performed and recorded and all of that, he got extremely nervous for performances. And when he would walk out on the stage, it was a terrifying experience for him to walk out there. And indeed, he was so nervous that he, you know, this is probably a, really amazing that I've never revealed this to anyone before, but his foot would shake, his pedal foot would shake like crazy. And I remember sometimes at performances looking at him and feeling so badly for him because there he is trying to control things and his foot is going up and down like crazy. It was once a kind of a funny, in retrospect, one of his reviews, the, the reviewer commented on his beautiful performance and his pedal technique that he it was of this fluttering t pedal technique. Little did he know it was nothing intentional. It was something that my father fought with his whole career. And what he, the way he overcame it was very interesting because for him, the easiest thing to start a program with was something really heroic. He could go out in there and play, you know, the most bombastic, virtuosic music. And with that, he didn't have much trouble. But to go out and play a delicate piece like to start a program with Mozart or Schubert Impromptu was extremely challenging for him because with that very delicate music, any little motion of, of any part of the body has such profound effects. So he worked really hard to overcome this and was proud of himself that he could go out there and play something delicate as an opener for a program because programmatically, he wanted to be able to have some architecture, not to be able to start with the most heroic thing. Usually you want to end with that, right? So uh, I, I share this with you because what was interesting about my father's performances, we'd always come backstage at intermission and hug him and, and we'd say, I tell him how beautiful it sounded. We'd go, really? I said, yes, it's great. And he couldn't even believe it because he was so terrorized up there for the first half. But in the second half, he would relax. And by the time he got to the end of the program, he was in his element. And he would play encore after encore and the audience would just cheer for more and bravos and screaming encore. And he'd play five, six encores, as many as the audience wanted. And at that point, he could do anything. He had no nerves left whatsoever. And it was a, just a thrilling experience for everyone who would hear him. So uh, what I'm going to do for you, uh, actually, is to play two encores that uh, exemplify these two different types of encores. And here's the key. Uh, if a program, you know, ends and you come out there and, of course, an encore, the audience has been through a whole program. You want to, you know, charge them up. So, you, you know, you play like an A2. You know, something like that, the Chopin uh, uh, Ocean Etude or something virtuosic that, yeah, get some charge up. But what if the program has ended with something big and dynamic and, and uh, it's already, you know, a blockbuster work at the end of the program. Then you come out, it's like, it's too much already. So that's when you want to flip it and come out with a poetic encore, you know, maybe a Chopin Nocturne or a Prelude. <laughs> And that can be just the mood you're looking for. And what I've chosen for you are two pieces that I would play as encores in programs, as a matter of fact, with my parents in mind. My father recorded the Scriabin Etudes Opus 8, and it was the first modern recording of the complete Opus 8, which won record of the year. And as a matter of fact, you can find it on YouTube. It's, it's, uh, it's posted on YouTube, and it's glorious playing. And, they don't sound like etudes when he plays them because it just sounds like music. He didn't play them as a technical exercise. He played them for the gorgeous music that this early Scriabin was. The Opus 8 was very different from later Scriabin where he explored 
very sophisticated harmonies that bordered on atonality. But early Chopin, uh, pardon me, Scriabin, is sometimes compared to Chopin. Well, it really has a voice all its own, but it's extremely chromatic, beautiful, romantic music that is very emotional. And, uh, you know, I got to hear my father play this in New York at Lincoln Center and other places and uh, being at his recording sessions and all of that and it has very special meaning. So I'm going to play the Opus 8, the last of the set, the D-sharp minor. And what I'm going to do for you then is just as if the program ended heroically, because that is an incredibly blockbuster piece, the way it ends, then I'm going to go right into the um, a movement of Debussy he, from the Children's Corner Suite, The Little Shepherd, which was my mother's favorite piece, and I would play it for her as an encore. So this is very special and a personal note for you. I hope you enjoy the, uh, the performance.
So those are two completely different types of encores. And what is appropriate depends upon your programming. So remember, if you've already you know, taken all the stops and you've really ended big, then bring it down and show some poetry and feeling and show what you can do to the soul. On the other hand, if the program is, is maybe you've ended with a, a Schubert sonata or something that's long and beautiful and melodic and with beautiful architecture, then you want to just charge people up so they leave there with energy. So judging your encores is very important and sometimes you, you we can even have two or three encores prepared or maybe you're brave enough and you have an audience that's enthusiastic enough that you can play a bunch of encores like my father used to do. So that's all we have today for you. I hope you've enjoyed this. And once again, this is livingpianos.com, your online piano resource. And I love all of you who have subscribed. Thank you. And my Patreon members, I really appreciate it. You know, the Patreon members get early access to videos, so you might consider joining. Thanks again for joining me. I'm Robert Estrin. We'll see you next time.